السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عباده الذين اصطفى All praise is indeed due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Complete blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Blessings and salutations upon all the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless the ulama of this ummah and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all and to bless our offspring, those to come up to the day of Qiyamah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us every form of goodness. Honored ulama, beloved brothers and sisters and respected listeners, the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his curse is real. It happens and it comes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes angry. As much as we've learned that he is extremely merciful, the most merciful, there are sometimes certain actions that we engage in that earn the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his anger and his curse and his punishment. And it is important that we realize that the Quran has addressed, the Quran has addressed us as well as all mankind regarding the anger and wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The idea of that is for us to take heed. We must make sure we are not engaged in those type of deeds. Because believe me, if you know, may Allah protect us, that a very, very powerful human being is extremely angry with you, I think it would give you sleepless nights. More so if we are to give you even a cheaper example, if you witness an angry lion outside there, nobody will leave this masjid. May Allah protect us. We are ready to fear an animal and we are not prepared to fear, to fear the creator of the entire creation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from hypocrisy. We need to realize and understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares his anger against certain people and against certain actions. And this is why I have chosen to speak about the anger and the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tonight. Taking the verses from the Quran, which have made mention of the anger and the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, clustering them together as one subject and one topic. The idea is for us to learn, to take heed, to weep for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to mend our ways before it is too late. The first issue we need to remember is in Surah Al-Fatiha, which is the opening surah of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of a dua. And I've mentioned this dua where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem. Guide us to the straight path. That is by far the most important prayer that anyone could make. Guide me to the straight path, O my creator. Guide us all to the straight path, O the one who has created myself and yourselves. Amin. Now, the rest of the surah is connected to what the straight path is. It is the path of those whom Allah has favored, which means the prophets, the messengers, those who believe and do good deeds. And we continue to say, Ya Allah, save us from those who have earned your anger and those who have gone astray. So, the meaning of the straight path is mentioned in the same surah and we repeat it so many times. صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. And we all find ourselves saying Amin. We ask Allah to grant us that du'a. Ya Allah, grant us the path of those whom You have favored, and do not grant us the path of those who have earned Your anger. That shows already that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has anger and we may sometimes be engaged in deeds that will earn or ask for the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is referred to as the anger here? They are They are those who knew the truth but left it. That is who is being referred to by those who have earned the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The people of the book as well as all others 
who have known the truth, they knew what the truth was. They knew that this is what we are waiting for. We are waiting for this sign and that sign. When the messenger came to them with all those signs, they preferred to cover their book and turn it and twist it and hide it. And they preferred not to accept the message solely because of the fact that he was from amongst the Arabs and he was not from amongst them. The same applies to every single one of us. If we know the truth, we know the Quran, we claim to believe it, we claim to accept it, we know the messenger, we know the messengers, we know the revelation, we know the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. If we then reject it and turn away from it, we will earn the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if Allah is angry with us, believe me, it spells doom for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us about shaitan, the devil, Iblis, the one whom we spoke about. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, be careful. He is the one who is cursed. He is the one whom Allah's anger is upon. Listen to the verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are those who call out to shaitan. There are those who call out to the devils. Allah says, the devil is cursed and he is the one whom Allah's curse is upon. Let's listen to what else Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention. That verse was in Surah Al-Nisa. In Surah Al-Hijr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّ عَلَيْكَ اللَّعْنَةَ إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الدِّينِ Iblis, for you is the curse of Allah until the day of Qiyamah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. One might ask that what were the details of what shaitan did in order to earn the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's important we know it. Because if we engage in the same deed, Wallahi, we will be asking for the curse of the Creator Himself. Listen to what Allah says. The deed that shaitan committed was pride and arrogance, haughtiness and ingratitude. He was ungrateful. Allah gave him everything. He still turned away from Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him life. Allah gave him uh, his own health in whatever way he has it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him absolutely everything and still he turned away. With us, we have life, we have health, we have time, we have the whole 24 hour day, we have so much goodness, we have food, mashallah, we drink, we eat. But we can't even spend a few minutes for the Creator in Salah. Is that fair? Do we then expect goodness or do we expect the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He gives us a day with 24 hours. Then He tells us, I want 24 minutes back from you. Only 24 minutes. In the condition of Salah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us regular with our five Salah. Therefore, don't be lazy when it comes to getting up for Salatul Fajr. Don't be lazy when it comes to the other Salawat to fulfill the five daily prayers that we have. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gave us 24 hours. He's asking us for 24 minutes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection and understanding. So the quality of Iblis that made him earn the anger, the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was arrogance, haughtiness, ingratitude. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Sad. This verse seems to be repeating itself. Allah says that Iblis said, I am better than him. I am better than whom? I am better than Adam. May peace be upon him. Adam alayhi salatu was salam. I am better than him in this way, in that way. You have created me with fire. You created him with soil, with dust, with sand. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then expelled Iblis alayhi la'natullah. Allah expelled the devil from heaven. And this shows us whenever we engage in haughtiness and pride, we will be expelled from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will take away from us our happiness and our goodness and he will kick us right out. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, اُخْرُجْ مِنْهَا فَإِنَّكَ رَجِيمٌ Get out. Get straight out of this heaven. There's no place for you in this goodness. You are indeed one who is cursed. You are one who is really astray. You are one who is out of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are the pelted one. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to pelt shaitan when we go to Mina for hajj. But the idea is to remove shaitan from our own selves. Shaitan comes and finds within our bloodstream a home. 
And sometimes he then takes control of us. It's important that we say, "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim We ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to protect us from shaitan, the devil. So Allah says, subhanahu wa taala, in the same surah, He says, "Wa inna alayka la'nati ila yawm al-din." You have my curse because of this, because of what you said, because of what you did, because of your arrogance, because of your haughtiness, because you thought you were better than him, because you thought you were better than another creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whom Allah had granted elevation above you, for that reason you can be cursed and you will have my curse right up to the day of Qiyamah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never do that to any one of us. That was shaitan and iblis. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about ingratitude, and fighting the messengers of Allah. Those who fight the messengers of Allah have earned the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There were some of the people of the book who used to kill the messengers. Every time a messenger came, they didn't like the message because they had to change their whole lives in order to adopt what that messenger was coming with. They were used to bad ways and bad habits and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains to us how they killed the anbiya, they killed the messengers, they killed the prophets, they fought them. And for us, do you know how it applies to us? Anyone who is the messenger of the messenger, if we make his life difficult, who are the messengers of messengers? The ulama, those scholars of deen who have studied the religion, they come back to us with knowledge of the messengers, of what the messengers came with. They are known as messengers of the messenger. And this is why it is important that we do not fight them. We do not despise them, we do not disrespect them. They are not prophets. You may find them erring here and there, making a mistake or two. But remember, if we are to disrespect them, we will reduce the value of the scholars of religion. Let me inform you of a plot, a plot and a plan of the enemies of Islam that we as Muslims do not realize and we are forwarding. We have ulama within our midst sometimes who at times because they are not anbiya, they are not prophets, they, are, they have a few errors, they may make mistakes here and there, they may need a little bit of correction and rectification and that applies to every single one of us. But now you have a plan to reduce the respect of the ulama in the eyes of the Muslim masses across the globe. Wallahi that is a plan and it is a plot and I have come with my own eyes, I have read some of these issues that are mentioned by the enemies of Islam within their own findings and researches and they are following and adopting and they are succeeding in destroying the Muslim Ummah to a certain degree. When I say destroying the, the Muslims themselves, drifting them away from Islam. No one can destroy Islam as a religion, but they can easily drift the Muslims away from Islam. May Allah never do that to us. What is happening? Any scholar whose name you utter today, whether in this country or anywhere on the globe, someone somewhere will have something bad to say about them. Do you agree? Yes, it is. It's a fact. I can tell you and I can show it to you. You name me any scholar, whether it is in your community or in your country or in my country or anywhere across the, across the globe. How shaitan has made us despise our own scholars, those who are supposed to bring religion to us. No one respects any one of them. Name me the top scholars of your country. You will find a large group of people fighting them. This is the plan, this is the plot, and we are sucked into it. Allah says that's the curse of Allah. It is the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One wonders why that is happening to us. We have left the book, we have left the message, and we have left the messengers, and the messengers of the messengers are also from amongst those who are being fought and tackled. When you have a problem or when you notice a scholar of Islam doing something that is wrong and incorrect, the way to correct it is not to go to the masses. And to try and tell the masses this person is useless because then people will say the same about you. And then the whole community and all the public will have no one to give them guidance. They will get their guidance from the internet. And for your information, the internet is full of websites which are purporting to be Muslim sites. But they subtly have certain messages which will then drift you away from Islam. Be careful of the internet. Wallahi, a lot of the sites that we think there are Muslims behind, they are actually non-Muslims who are the enemies of Islam. They give you a lot of truth on the first page, they take you to the second page, then they tell you some few items that will contaminate your brain and mind and you begin to argue and debate. Allahu Akbar! Arguing and debating also will result in the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descend upon people. We will come across that verse inshallah. But let's get back to the most important point. Those who are fighting the messengers and the prophets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala curses them. 
And let us realize and understand, Wallahi, we need to respect the man for his knowledge. If there is an error, we try and correct it. If it is something great that is wrong, completely out of the fold, we may educate others in a respectful manner without despising and respecting. I tell you why. Every scholar of deen, Allah has given them a different ability to get to a different category of people. So if we are to respect all of them and all the different types of activity of this religion, inshallah, we will be able to wholesomely benefit the entire ummah. But when we start despising one group and we start despising those scholars and people who studied here and those who went there, we are forwarding the cause of the enemies of Islam because it will result in loss of respect of the scholars of Islam amongst the public and that is happening today. Believe me, I have witnessed it in this country. Very sad days are being witnessed by us in this particular country and across the globe where true scholars of Islam are being accused of items they are free of. And remember that is the curse of Allah that is falling into the clutches of shaitan. It is our duty to utter this. And this is why we have uttered it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wherever correction needs to happen, and I'm repeating this, it should happen with respect and it should happen with the, the dignity of the scholar of deen remaining intact to as, as far as we can. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who respect all the ulama of this ummah. Wallahi, we need to respect all of them. Where they have gone wrong, we need to realize they are not prophets. That is the difference. Every single scholar of this religion may have erred because they are human. We will not just cancel their name and delete them totally because of that. Take whatever is good and leave what is wrong and incorrect. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. From some you will learn what you've never ever learnt if only you lent them an ear before people label them. Another thing very sadly amongst the ulama themselves there is something known as professional jealousy. When one is doing very well the others just like any other business the others might then start attacking, labeling, calling names. That also is directly from shaitan. Shaitan also comes to the ulama. May Allah protect us all. And this is why ignore those type of statements. When people attack other ulama, you ignore it. When they have told you with knowledge, look, this is what it is. And just be a little bit careful and so on. You may then with respect be careful. But at the same time, we don't want to despise. Because imagine if you've made a mistake with one of the scholars of deen. Spread rumors about them. You are cursed and doomed up to the last day. They might just be a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you don't know what exactly you've got into. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about those who fight the messengers of Allah. He says, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about those who have earned the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember the anger is far worse than the curse. But the curse is also extremely dangerous. The word ghadab includes curse in it. Allahu Akbar. The anger includes the curse in it. And the term curse is extremely dangerous. Imagine if Allah has to curse someone himself. So Allah says, the reason why I cursed those people, the reason why my anger was deserved by them, was because they fought the messengers and they disbelieved and they were ungrateful. The fact that we sent them such a top messenger, they were ungrateful that we chose them to be from amongst those who will be around that particular messenger. Wallahi, the same applies with us in a different way. Sometimes there is a scholar of religion in our midst. We do not realize his value and we take him for granted. Yet he is in our own community and we are ungrateful. If that is the case, Allah will take him away and others will benefit from him in a way that we never ever dreamt of. And we will only possibly and probably realize it if we engage in tawbah, repent or on the day of Qiyamah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all protection. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about a murderer. Someone who murders a mu'min who is innocent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that murderer will definitely have the anger and the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they will be cast into hellfire forever and ever. Whoever kills an innocent mu'min, whoever kills a fellow mu'min intentionally, 
Whoever is a murderer, Allah says, for them not only is the anger, but the anger and the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are very, very few verses in the Quran which have made mention of both anger and curse of the Creator in one verse. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us protection. This is one of them. So therefore, even to point a weapon at a fellow believer is completely prohibited. At an innocent individual is completely prohibited. And remember, every non-Muslim around you is a potential Muslim. Every non-Muslim around you is a potential Muslim. My duty and your duty when it comes to the non-Muslims is to convey to them the beautiful message of Islam to want them to accept this religion as badly as we'd like it for ourselves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us broad-minded and may He make us from amongst those who realize that the kuffar who are around us, it is our duty to portray to them the beautiful teachings of Islam. With the idea of letting them enter the fold of Islam, the hadith says, Wallahi la an yahdi Allahu bika rajulan wahida khayrul laka min humurin na'am. If Allah has used you to guide even one person, it's better for you than the most expensive of the wealth of this whole dunya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says another thing that he really becomes angry with is when someone associates partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any form of partner with Allah is unacceptable. This is a topic that we should be speaking about day and night because this is one of the prime ways shaitan comes to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned us. He told us that this is how the people of the book in the past have, le have been led astray by worshipping others besides Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that is the only and the biggest crime. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was leaving this dunya, he told us as one of the last things before leaving, he says, I fear for my ummah, the shirk, shirk meaning association of partnership with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He himself has uttered that as one of his last words. Let's take heed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-A'raf, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا الْعِجَلَ سَيَنَالُهُمْ غَضَبٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَذِلَّةٌ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Those who took the calf, you know there was a calf at the time of Moses, Musa alayhi salam. There was a calf that they had made with their jewelry which was making a sound. And they began to worship the calf. That was association of partnership with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, those who worship that calf, the, the anger of Allah, the wrath of Allah will descend upon them and they will be cursed. Listen to what Allah says. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they will be cursed in the dunya as well as in the akhirah. Imagine a double curse. And this brings us to another point. The curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is spoken about in two ways. One is in the dunya and in the akhirah. In this world as well as in the next. And the other is just in the next. Which means sometimes... Allah is very, very angry with a person, but He gives them respite. He gives them a moment. He gives them a long life. He probably might not test them in this life. That's up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows why He does that sometimes. They might have done one or two good deeds, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want to oppress them. But when they come into the akhirah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will then definitely say that, you know what? You've spent your coupons. You did good deeds, yes, but you've actually spent your coupons. Meaning, you know, when you do a good deed, if we were to say that you get a coupon in return, then naturally by you getting good health, you're spending a coupon. When you have children who are very, very gorgeous looking, mashallah, that's another coupon. Children who listen to you, that's another coupon. So sometimes there are people who don't believe, they use those coupons in the dunya. When they believe, then inshallah, those coupons will be kept for the akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a good reward inshallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, regarding disbelief, after you have been a Muslim, a person who is a murtad, apostate, someone who turned back from Islam. They were Muslim. They saw the guidance. They saw the Islam. They saw the Iman. And thereafter, they were on the right path. And after that, they left the right path. Now when we read this verse, it appears to us that it doesn't apply to me, isn't it? Wallahi, it applies to every one of us. The lesson is for everyone. Let's take a look at the deeper meaning of the verses. First, let's read the verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَيْفَ يَهْدِ اللَّهُ قَوْمًا كَفَرُوا بَعْدَ إِيمَانِهِمْ وَشَهِدُوا أَنَّ الرَّسُولَ حَقٌّ وَجَاءَهُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ أُولَئِكَ جَزَاؤُهُمْ أَنَّ عَلَيْهِمْ لَعْنَةَ اللَّهِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ وَالنَّاسِ أَجْمَعِينَ 
How can Allah guide people who turned to disbelief after they were believers and after the truth and the signs came to them, they turned away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah does not guide the oppressors. Those are oppressors. They are wrongdoers. Allah says, for them is a curse of Allah as well as the angels will curse them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never do that to us. So to turn away from guidance after you've got it is a big crime. Though the word here that is used is when someone disbelieves after believing, but it also includes someone who leaves guidance after they've got it. May Allah protect us. And this is made mention of in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He explains it. It is called al-hawr ba'd al kawr To turn back after you are rightly guided. May Allah protect us. There is a curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is one narration where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam makes mention of an yakraha an ya'uda ila al-kufr kama yakrahu an yulqa fi nar a person should hate to go back to disbelief in the same way they would hate to be cast in hellfire. Some people think it's talking about Islam and Kufr only. That is included in it, but it also includes the following. When a person has been granted the acceptance of Allah to be guided on a path, and then they take steps backward spiritually, they are included in this curse. If Allah has guided you to read five salah a day, then suddenly you drop it to four, you are included in the curse. May Allah not do that to us. If Allah has guided a woman to put on a headscarf and suddenly one day she throws it out, she is included in this curse. So the movement to guidance needs to be forward, not backwards. That's what we learn. When you are getting guided, you must move forward and forward and forward. Don't ever go backwards because that will earn the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah never do that to us. Why is that the case? It is the case because, say for example, a female whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided the ability to dress correctly. Then suddenly one day she discards that dress and she, she leaves it and you see her once again in, in dress that is unacceptable. The, what she is telling her creator is, you know what? You told me to do something. I found something better and more suitable for me than what you are saying. Allahu Akbar. May Allah protect us. After you've seen the goodness, you know what is right. You've come on the course. You've actually tasted the goodness of it. Suddenly you want to discard it. You think you're playing a game with your creator here? That creator is also the owner of anger and the owner of curse. He may become very angry and he may curse you to the degree that you will never see happiness again in your life. We hope that that is not the case. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to dress appropriately both male and female. To live our lives according to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about that. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the kafirun, those who have disbelieved, those who have turned away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when the truth came to them, they knew it and they turned away. So Allah's curse is upon those who disbelieve. That is the curse of Allah. Mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah. In Surah Hud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of how he curses the one who is oppressing. Anyone who is oppressing anyone is included in this, though the verse might be referring to those who have oppressed in a specific manner. But when the terms are used in the Quran, they include all the different types of oppression. You are oppressing your wife, you are oppressing your husband, you are oppressing your children, you are oppressing your parents, you are oppressing family members, you are oppressing those who work for you. You are oppressing those who, who have employed you, you are oppressing anyone on this globe. Allah says you are included in the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Behold the curse of Allah upon those who have oppressed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never make us from those who oppress. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ghafir about the same oppressors. And I told you oppression includes shirk. It includes all forms of evil. And it also includes what we've said. The excuse of the oppressors on the day of Qiyamah will not help them. They will come and present excuses. No, Ya Allah, I didn't really know. You know, I'm, I'm this and I'm that. And you know, I was... Allah says, no, you were an oppressor. So today your excuse will not help you for you and upon you is a curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then speaks about those who spread corruption on earth, those who commit sin on earth, those who want to promote vice on earth, and they spread evil on earth. They are called al-mufsidun. They spread what is known as fasad. Fasad includes all forms of corruption and evil on earth. A person who spreads corruption, a promoter of evil, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Surah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah says, فَهَلْ عَسَيْتُمْ إِن تَوَلَّيْتُمْ أَن تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَتُقَطِّعُوا أَرْحَامَكُمْ أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ لَعَنَهُمُ اللَّهُ فَأَصَمَّهُمْ وَأَعْمَىٰ أَبْصَارَهُمْ Allah says there are certain people whom he has cursed and he has made them dumb and he has closed their eyes. In fact, he has made them deaf. He has made them deaf and he has closed their eyes. They neither hear guidance nor do they see the guidance. Who are those? Allah says they are those whom when they are granted authority on earth, when they are given any form of authority on earth, they then spread corruption on earth. And they do not maintain the links that Allah has instructed them to maintain. Those who spread evil on earth and do not maintain the bonds and the links that Allah has instructed them to maintain. And what is that link? That brings us straight to the next point. The curse of Allah is upon those who sever family relations. Those who have destroyed family ties for mere reasons which are not even valid in the Sharia. Yes, if there is a valid reason, Someone is a complete drunkard. Someone has absolutely no hope and scope. And they are continuing to lead our, ourselves as well as our children astray or they are trying to do that. And we've tried with them and we continue trying with them. In that case, we are allowed to sever links to a great degree. But nowadays, the bulk of the links that are severed are connected to money. Wealth or women, may Allah protect us. Sometimes your wife had a small problem with your mother. And what happens entirely you destroy the whole relation may Allah protect us you can minimize it you can put link you can put rules and regulations a lot of us the problems we have in our homes are because we did not set rules and regulations we haven't drawn the lines and the limits believe me if you stand up like a man and tell your mom look I love you so much but these are the limits this is where you stop this is the line and tell the same to your wife tell the same to your children believe me you would sort half of your problems out the problem with us, we've got no limits. We never discussed it. Mommy, I love you. I love you. And we think love means you are allowed to oppress my wife. And then you tell your wife, wife, I love you. And we think that that means that you must just tolerate what my mother does. Allahu Akbar. We are human. She is human. We can't do that. Draw the lines and you must be a man, not a mouse. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Really, it's a fact of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gives us a warning to say when you sever ties, when you sever family relations for no apparent reason or for a meager reason without trying to mend it for you is a curse and a punishment and the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't want that to happen to us. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ra'd. وَالَّذِينَ يَنْقُضُونَ عَهْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مِيثَاقِهِ وَيَقْطَعُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ Allah says, those who break their promise with Allah. You know, we make a promise to Allah. Normally when we engage in Tawbah, Ya Allah, I promise you I won't do this again. You break it once. Okay, Allah will forgive you again, inshallah. But then you break it again and again and again and again. You make that promise with Allah cheap. May Allah protect us. Also, when you break your promises with one another, it is called Naqdul Ahdi as well. You made a promise to someone, fulfill it. The Muslimin, when you utter something with your tongue, it's enough. That itself must be an oath and a promise. It's enough. People must believe you for that. If you told them, look, I will arrive at 9 o'clock, try and get there at 5 to 9 if you're a good Muslim. But if you know in your heart you're not going to go and you tell them expect me at 9 o'clock, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us unless you have a valid reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wrath might descend on you because of the fact that you might have deceived the fellow mu'mineen and believers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who break their promise with Allah and those who do not maintain the relations that Allah has instructed them to maintain, those are the family ties. 
your parents, your children, your uncles, your aunts, your sisters, your brothers, their families and so on. It is important you maintain a link. It does not mean that you need to live at their house and they live at yours. No. If you go and have too many meals at your brother's house who is married, when you yourself are also married, it might be a problem. His wife might think or might look at it as though this is actually overstepping my own limits. They are treating me like a slave. They are treating me like this and like that. Sometimes you have little daughters-in-law who, who come into the house and then they are treated like real slaves. You do all the cooking, you do all the washing, you do all the cleaning. Now, that's it, it's your job. And then you have the sister-in-law who is the sister of the husband who comes in and says, right, I need eggs at two o'clock and you've you got to wake up for me in the morning because I need to catch a train. May Allah protect us. Is that how we're supposed to treat one another in Islam? If we oppress people, wallahi, the anger of Allah will descend upon us wholesale one day. And this is why it's important for us to ask ourselves, do we make people's lives easy or difficult? If you have made a single person's life difficult in any way, Allah has promised He will make your life difficult in one way or another. And if you have made a single person's life easy, Allah will make your life easy on condition that you haven't also made other people's lives difficult. So nowadays we look and we say, no, I helped this one, I helped that one, I did this one. But in your own house, you are oppressing your own people, your own spouses, your children, your in-laws and so on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who can help at home. Make us from those who can promote peace, who can make others' lives easy so that we can earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for those people who have cut their relations and family ties, they are not bothered in mending it. They are not bothered to make amends. Allah says, for them is the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Firstly in the dunya, as well as in the akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how some people of the book were cursed because they broke their promise with Allah. Listen to what Allah says in Surah Al-Ma'idah. فَبِمَا نَقْضِهِمْ مِيثَاقَهُمْ لَعَنَّاهُمْ وَجَعَلْنَا قُلُوبَهُمْ قَاسِيَةً There were certain people whom Allah cursed because they broke their promise with Allah. And over and above that, Allah made their hearts hard. What is the meaning of a hard heart? A hard heart is that which sees the signs but does not tremble. A hard heart is that which is reminded and understands and recognizes the reminder but does not turn. That is a hard heart. So we ask Allah to protect us from a hard heart. A hard heart is a heart of the one who's been sinning for years on end without thinking of returning to Allah. That is a hard heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a return. May He grant us happiness really and may He be pleased with us as well. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thereafter speaks about another major crime in Surah Al-Anfal. And that is at the time of war. Anyone who leaves the battlefield without a reasonable Islamic reason, an acceptable reason, Allah says for them is really the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen to what Allah says in Surah Al-Anfal. Those who run away from the battlefield and who turn away without a valid shar'i reason, meaning if it is done as a war tactic or on instruction of the leader, then it's fine. But if it is turning away and running away from a battlefield, Allah says, for them and upon them is the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. The next thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of, or that we are going to mention here that Allah has spoken about in Surah Taha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't exceed the limits. Anyone who exceeds the limits and exaggerates, meaning goes beyond the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any way, they will earn the anger. The anger will then become incumbent upon them of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كُلُوا مِن طَيِّبَاتِ مَا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ وَلَا تَطْغَوْ فِيهِ فَيَحِلَّ عَلَيْكُمْ غَضَبِي وَمَنْ يَحْلِلْ عَلَيْهِ غَضَبِي فَقَدْ هَوَى Allah says, Eat and enjoy, eat and drink and thank Allah, but do not exceed the limits in anything. Don't exceed the limits. 
In fact, one narration, the Prophet ﷺ warns us about exceeding the limits regarding himself. And this was towards the end of his life. He was worried, he was concerned. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum asked him, they said, what is, what is it that you are concerned about? He looked at them and he says, لا تطروني كما أطرت النصار ابن مريم ولكن قولوا عبد الله ورسوله Don't ever, I am fearing, don't ever exceed the limits with me in the same way that those who followed Jesus Christ exceeded the limits with him and took him up to Godhood. Always say Abdullahi wa Rasuluh whenever you mention my name. Allahu Akbar. This is why we say Muhammadan Abduhu wa Rasuluhu. When we bear witness, we don't just say Muhammadun Rasulullah. We also add the term Abduhu wa Rasuluhu. He is the worshiper of Allah. He is the slave of Allah and the messenger of Allah. The term Abd refers to being enslaved by someone. And we are all the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to exceed the limits in anything, Allah's anger and wrath descends upon such people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, eat and drink, do not exceed the limits in anything because then my anger will fall upon you and whomsoever my anger falls upon, they will indeed collapse. That's the word used. Hawa, to drop, to collapse. Whoever my anger falls upon will collapse. So they will find they will have no goodness in the dunya, no goodness in the akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all protection. May He make us from those who do not exceed the limits. Then there is another issue where both the anger and the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned. When you accuse someone of having an affair, Allahu Akbar, the anger and curse of Allah are upon you. Allahu Akbar. To accuse a person of committing adultery is one of the biggest crimes you could ever engage in. It is one of the few crimes where Allah has mentioned both the anger and the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Especially to accuse a woman, but even if you were accusing a man. Allahu Akbar, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our tongues. Nowadays, we take it very lightly. Oh, did you hear the latest? We'll phone people, we'll spend money to commit a sin. Phone someone, go and visit them. Hey, I brought you hot spicy news. What's the news? Hey, you know so and so? They're going out with so and so. You know they're having an affair. And you know what? This. And you know what? That. Allahu Akbar. The one who is uttering it has the curse and anger of Allah because of what they said. The one who heard it has also the curse and anger of Allah by association that is mentioned in the Quran. Why do you associate with those who have earned the anger of Allah? Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu la tatawallaw qawman ghadib allahu alayhim O you who believe never ever befriend or don't even find yourselves in the company of those who have earned the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Stay far from them. So when you know someone is accusing others, they are also from amongst those who are earning the anger. If you are with them, if the rock has to drop from heaven, you'll also die with the same rock. Because you are sitting in their house. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. In fact, the rocks would fall from hell, not from heaven. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all protection. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about that. When someone accuses a, a, an innocent person, listen to what Allah says in Surah An-Nur. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَرْمُونَ الْمُحْصَنَاتِ الْغَافِلَاتِ الْمُؤْمِنَاتِ لُعِنُوا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ يَوْمَ تَشْهَدُ عَلَيْهِمْ أَلْسِنَتُهُمْ وَأَيْدِيهِمْ وَأَرْجُلُهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Allah says, oh, those who accuse believing females of the sin of adultery, Allah says for them is the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even on the day of Qiyamah, their hands and their feet and their body organs will bear witness against them. And Allah says, we have cursed them completely. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our mouths and our tongues. And may He make us from amongst those who can worry about ourselves. Nowadays, the beauty is, we tend to entertain stories regarding people we don't even know. And sometimes people want to feel important and they want to make minimum or they want to make fair seeming the sin that they are committing by saying, well, everyone's doing it today. You see, if they are committing adultery, they then think everyone else is committing adultery as well. So they look at the others and say, well, everyone's doing it. No, not everyone is doing it. Believe me. There are people who are pure, who are chaste, who are protecting themselves for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you have made yourself cheap, may Allah protect us all. May He grant us all protection inshallah and may He forgive us. And at the same time, may He purify us in every single way. So, a person who has a guilty conscience likes to accuse others. 
and wants to make things cheap so that they can seem to be part and parcel of the rest of the ummah. Yet they are cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May we never ever do that. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about someone who accuses his own wife. Allahu Akbar. A person who accuses his own wife, if he has seen with his own eyes but has no more witnesses, then they engage in something known as li'an. And li'an is a specific type of res resolving this particular crisis where the two will be separated on condition that they bear witness four times that they were speaking the truth or that the man was speaking the truth and the female must say no he is lying four times the fifth time the man must say may the curse of Allah be upon me if I am lying and the fifth time the female must say may the anger of Allah be upon me if I if he is telling the truth Allahu Akbar and if that's the case the two are separated and one wonders may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us how wise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he has actually granted us the resolution of this problem in the dunya in this way. If that happens, if this li'an happens, both parties will be considered innocent and truthful. And we will close the chapter there and then the female will then be considered truthful because it may have been a misunderstanding, it may have been something, whatever it was. But imagine we are not allowed to mess our tongues with that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And who would be foolish to invoke the curse of Allah upon them to say, Ya Allah, curse me. And that brings us to another angle of the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Al-Mubahala. We spoke about it a few days ago. Where when there is a lie that is being promoted and that lie is very serious, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us something known as Al-Mubahala. Where Allah says, فَقُلْ تَعَالَوْ Allah told Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to tell the Christians to come, bring, bring all your family. Come you and your women and your children. Come and stand on that side. We bring our families, our children and all our offspring and we stand on this side here. And we invoke the curse upon the liar. So we say, oh Allah, curse us, completely destroy us if we are lying. And you must say the same. <laughs> Believe me, they did not come to that. They did not want to even entertain that. Allahu Akbar. Because everybody knows that that is very serious. But that is a way of resolving the huge disputes. If the Christians had come to us with that, believe me, today the problem would have been solved. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Not only those people of the book, but these problems are within the Muslim ummah where people are accusing others. People are destroying communities. By spreading rumor, by spreading disaster, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really grant us all forgiveness. Then very quickly, let's move through some of the sins that will earn the anger of Allah and His curse. The first is to call someone by a bad name, nickname that they wouldn't like. So you call him Fatty in his absence. That is a major, major sin. If he likes the name Fatty, mashallah. But the beauty is, those fatties, sometimes they are not fat. One wonders how they got that name. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all good names inshallah. If someone calls you with a nickname, it's allowed if you like that name. It's allowed. They call you smally and you like it. You know, they call you something else and you nod your head. Yes, mashallah. But because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also had nicknames for his wives and so on. He used to call Aisha radiallahu anha Humaira, which means the one who blushes a lot, you know, the one who has red cheeks. But her name was Aisha radiallahu anha. So if you like the name, no problem. It's good. It can be sweet, at times it can be romantic. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us that if, you, if someone does not like the name, don't you dare ever call them that name in their presence or absence, lest the anger of Allah descends upon you. May Allah forgive us all. I think sometimes we are all guilty of this to a certain extent without knowing. So we ask Allah's forgiveness for that. Then another issue is to backbite, major, major sin. Another issue to gossip. To spread gossip and falsehood, major sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about falsehood. To spread accusation, to mock and joke about others, major sin. To doubt and suspect is one of the biggest crimes you could commit. To doubt and suspect. Doubting and suspecting is a cancer that has no cure besides with the person. They need to eradicate that doubt. Especially within a marital home, people doubt their spouses for no reason. Allahu Akbar. But that having been said, don't ever give your spouse the reason to doubt you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all inshallah a sound mind and may He grant us happiness in our homes. Very quickly, those who swear, those who bad mouth, who use ugly words, they are invoking 
the curse of Allah upon themselves. Those who eat haram, consume riba, consume interest and usury, they are invoking the, the anger of Allah upon them. Those who bear false witness and those who engage in magic, we spoke about yesterday. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all protection. Then I spoke about the reality of friendship. You are not allowed to befriend evil people. If that is the case, you also earn the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I've read the one verse, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions also in Surah Al-Mujadala. أَلَمْ تَرَ إِلَى الَّذِينَ تَوَلَّوْا قَوْمًا غَضِبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مَا هُمْ مِنْكُمْ وَلَا مِنْهُمْ Have you seen the people who have befriended those whom Allah's anger has descended upon or is descending upon or is to descend upon? Allah says, no, they are not from you and you are not from them. Which means those friends who befriended the enemies or who befriended those whom Allah's anger is upon, they themselves, their iman and Islam is questionable. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Then someone who hides knowledge, someone who hides goodness, someone who twists the truth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the curse upon them. Look at what Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah says those who hide the clear signs and the verses after they are made manifest for them is the curse of Allah and the angels and all the people unless they turn and repent Allah will forgive them and this is good news for all of us sometimes we fall in some of these categories here but we can avert and divert the anger and the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by tawbah. Those who have engaged in tawbah, then they've rectified themselves and they've made it clear. They've made the signs clear. They've made whatever they were hiding clear. For them, Allah says, I will forgive them. I am most forgiving, most merciful. Then another important issue where the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is made mention of. Allah says, when you see evil happening and you do nothing about it, you will earn the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you see evil happening and you do nothing about it. Now when we say doing nothing about it, we need to do what Islam teaches us. I told you moments ago about ulama, for example. It doesn't mean now you, you sit back, you relax. No, do something positive, constructive, use your brain. How will we solve the problem? How are we going to increase unity in the ummah with resolving this issue? And how are we going to enhance the problem solving within the Muslim ummah and keep the Muslim ummah, try to keep it as intact as possible. Yes, after you've tried and tried again, you are allowed to make it clear to say, look, we've tried and so on. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us. He says that the people of Dawood alayhi salatu was salam and the people of Banu Israel they were cursed because in Surah Al-Ma'idah Allah says they did not used to stop each other from committing evil they used to cover up for each other and they didn't used to bat an eyelid someone committed zina no one told him anything they didn't even have the guts why he was a rich man no keep quiet you might lose ah keep quiet I'm not losing anything that's the curse of Allah and Allah says it loud and clear in Surah Al-Ma'idah لعن الذين كفروا من بني إسرائيل على لسان داود وعيسى بن مريم ذلك بما عصوا وكانوا يعتدون كانوا لا يتناهون عن منكر فعلوه لبئس ما كانوا يفعلون Allah says those people of Banu Israel were cursed by Allah on the tongue of Dawood alayhi salatu was salam for many reasons. One of the reasons was because they did not used to prohibit each other from evil. They never discouraged each other when any one of them was engaged in bad. Nobody told them anything. No one had the guts to say one word because of who they were. They felt we might lose something. If that is the case, we too will earn the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Family member engaged in haram, your duty to raise it. Wife, husband engaged in haram, your duty to raise it. Raise it meaning make them aware of it. At least let them know that it is totally forbidden. Disassociate yourselves from them if it is extremely serious. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to resolve and solve. When we say amr bil ma'roof, which means enjoining good, 
We also need to say nahi anil munkar, forbidding that which is bad is as important. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who want to harm the messenger, those who want to hurt the messenger, those who want to try and harm Allah. You see, lately we heard on Facebook, there is a certain web page, may Allah protect us all, where they are showing toilet paper with the Quran written on it, Allahu Akbar. And they are trying to gather the momentum to say, everyone who supports this cause, come, let's create a club. So, if that is actually true, because I have just received an email, if that is actually true, where there is toilet paper with the name of Allah, they are trying to harm Allah. Will they be able to harm Allah? The answer is no, they are harming themselves. So Allah says that. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Subhana rabbi al-a'la. In Surah Al-Ahzab. Akbar. Those who try to harm Allah, they can't harm Allah. Those who try and they tend to harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or they want to harm the messenger. Whilst the messenger was there, there were people who physically harmed him. Nowadays they want to harm him by cartoons and by this and by that. And some of us as a Muslim ummah, we harm him by discarding his message. Allah says, for them is the curse first in this dunya, then in the akhirah. When a non-Muslim tells you, I leave that prophet, may Allah protect us. He is a non-Muslim, but the worst is when there is a Muslim who says, I believe in Allah and I believe in the messenger. He utters the shahada, la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And over and above that, he still says, no, I'm not ready to adopt what the prophet says. Allahu Akbar. That is a bigger curse. May Allah never curse us and may he never close our mouths and, and may he never close, close our ears and our eyes when it comes to the goodness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after that makes mention of others whom he has destroyed, the people of Ad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتِلْكَ عَادٌ جَحَدُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ There is Ad. There they are. We destroyed them. They denied the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَعَصَوْ رُسُلَهُ وَاتَّبَعُوا أَمْرَ كُلِّ جَبَّارٍ عَمِيرٍ They followed the cronies of society. They followed the rich and haughty of society. They didn't follow the messengers. And this brings us to another point. In, in community, you will have rich on one side and you will have Islam either on the same side or on another side. If you have a person who is wealthy and religious, Alhamdulillah. But if you have a person who is wealthy and not religious, remember religion comes before wealth. Don't support and don't even associate with. Allahu Akbar. It is a very solid point. Mostly you will find ulama on one side and wealthy, haughty people who want to clout up the whole community on the other. That is in a lot of communities. We as the general Muslim ummah, we need to take sides. Remember take sides with the ulama and do not take sides against them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Allah tells us here, and this is a very solid verse in Surah Hud. وَاتَّبَعُوا أَمْرَ كُلِّ جَبَّارٍ عَنِيدٍ وَأُتْبِعُوا فِي هَذِهِ الدُّنْيَا لَعْنَةً وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ because of their denial, because they followed the rich and the haughty in society and community, we cursed them entirely in the dunya as well as in the akhirah. That's why there are certain communities where you find when you enter the community, it is as though the curse of Allah has overtaken the whole community. Why? Because they are following the haughty and the powerful in terms of the dunya. They've forgotten the religion and they don't want to hear the message and they want religion to be under their own desires and whims and fancies. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. Then Allah speaks about Fir'aun. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we also cursed him. Allah says, they have followed. The curse shall follow them in the dunya as well as in the akhirah. Imagine you moving and the curse is following you wherever you go. May Allah protect us. That happened to Fir'aun. That happened to the people of Ad. And Allah says, we gave them that as a gift. That was a gift because he said he was God, isn't it? Allah says the gift was we cursed him in the dunya as well as in the akhirah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the people of Jannah and how the people of Jannah, they will call out to the people of Jahannam asking them a question. Listen to the question. It's a beautiful verse in Surah Al-A'raf. Allah says, Allah 
قَالُوا نَعَمْ The people of Jannah will call out to the people of Jahannam saying, Hey, we found what Allah promised us in the dunya to be true here. Did you find what Allah promised you to be true? They will be battling and bubbling in Jahannam and they will say, Yes, we found it to be true. Then the caller will call, فَأَذَّنَ مُؤَذِّنٌ بَيْنَهُمْ أَلَّعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الظَّالِمِينَ The caller will say, Nay, the curse of Allah be upon those who have oppressed. So even the people of Jahannam, they will be reminded of curse. Imagine salt on the wound. They are already in hell and Allah is telling them through a messenger that the curse of Allah be upon you. My dearest listeners, the point I'd like to end with is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah and in many other places in the Quran. In Surah Al-Baqarah, after making mention of his curse and his wrath and anger, he says, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ تَابُوا وَأَصْلَحُوا وَبَيَّنُوا فَأُولَٰئِكَ أَتُوبُ عَلَيْهِمْ Those who repent, those who turn, those who, who make clear, who make mends, Allah says, we will forgive them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most forgiving, most merciful. So today we've heard about the curse of Allah. How many times He's mentioned it in the Quran. Let us realize and understand that really we need to engage in repentance and let us become conscious of our deeds. If we are engaged in any of the deeds that were mentioned tonight, these are very serious deeds that will be invoking the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and calling it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all and save us from his curse and his anger. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahu bihamdihi subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu.